Not an old house. It's mold house. I expected a trained professional to at least walk me through the issues. Oh my god, that's a fire hazard. Holy crap. We're here to solve the electrical and mold issues that okay. are huge. You can see everything in here that I'm seeing that wasn't in the report. We feel like we've been had, so you just, oh, that anger is there, so. James and Doreen were thrilled at the opportunity of buying a house that they could afford and was big enough for their growing family. They even insisted on a home inspection, but unfortunately were robbed of the opportunity to be present for that inspection. Now they have growing mold problems so bad they can't even use some of the rooms in the house, and they're terrified of the electrical issues simply because they have children. I'm gonna find out what's wrong, and I'm gonna make it right. Before we bought our new home, we lived in an apartment. We've been there for about nine years, and with the three children, we needed room to expand and let them have fun, and we said, okay, this is it. This is time to start looking for our new home. Buying the house, it, it is a bit of a dream come true. Uh, the space and whatnot, its location, I mean, it fit all our needs. It gave us greater, greater space inside and amazing space outside. We have a huge backyard, a lot that barbecuing, badminton, there's so much space that the baby can just run around and go crazy and that we've never experienced before. So it was a big deal to, when we saw this at home, that this was it. In the process of buying the home, we went to a mortgage broker and uh, they took care of the home inspection because that was part of the clause. You get your funding and the home inspection. The only problem was I never got to go to the home inspection. <laughs> I was waiting at work, waiting for the home inspector to come in and uh, call me and nobody called. It was later that evening that I got that a call evening. from the realtor saying, oh, the, we already did the home inspection, don't worry, everything's fine and you'll get the report in a few days. I was upset when it, because I did want to go to that home inspection. I wanted to point things out and have it, a home inspector look at it and say, does this make sense? Does this look right? And I never got that chance to yeah. do that. We don't have like tons of money, so obviously as anybody out there, we want the price to be negotiated based on the home inspection. And not being there for the home inspection just, you know, it took the crutches out from under us. Hey, James. Yeah, I'm Mike. How are you doing? Doreen. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> the home inspection report read to me like a how-to manual. I didn't really get much out of it. OK, this looks pretty good. No handrail downstairs, not in the report. After you, please. We moved in, of course, the kids, they want their own rooms. And my one daughter was going to be with the baby in the front room. I know, I went in there, I started to check it out. What are we going to do in here to get it ready? And uh, I happened upon the closet, which was originally obstructed by a side table. And lo and behold, there's mold there. I can smell it. So we see mold definitely right in the closet, right in the base of the closet here. Did you notice anyone in the house with uh, watering eyes, lots of sneezing? Well, a lot of coughing. We have coughing issues. OK. Right now, it appears we have an issue. I can smell it in the air. I am worried. And we should leave this room and close up this door and try and keep this door closed for your kids. This is the access to the attic? This was sealed? The attic was silicone shut, preventing access, and the home inspector was not to go in there. All right, let's take a look while I'm here. After moving in, of course, we went in there, broke the seal, and yeah, found that to be all black up above on the sheeting. We have mold. We have water marks everywhere. All kinds of electrical issues, new tying into old. Oh my God, that's a fire hazard. Holy crap. We definitely felt the electrical was a mess. The microwave, if you plug that in and try to use the toaster, it, things just shut off and on on you. You could be sitting in the living room and the lights flicker on and off. I might as well close this crap up. I don't, I'm don't. i going to be going in there, and I'm not going to be a happy camper. I was in the bathroom, and I decided, oh, I'm, where is the plug? I was looking for it, and my daughter said, oh, look, it's at the base of the cabinet, mommy. In a very dangerous spot. Think of the kids in the tub. What do kids do? You know, my kids did it. They're in the tub, they're splashing, they're playing, and we got a receptacle so low on the floor. I went and plugged it in, okay, it worked. 
Then they would turn back again. You know, it didn't work. There's water all over this floor, and the kids get out of the tub, and they're standing in the water, and that water's trickled underneath this cabinet right under here. The electrical line is touching the floor. What is, what is going to happen to the kids? They're 100% grounded. And the possibility of my children or any children at all being harmed due to absolute stupidity is unacceptable. But even more unacceptable is that this was not in the report. Is it wired right? No! <laughs> wired wrong? Jeez, go figure. OK, OK, OK. We thought this is it. This is the dream house that we've been waiting for. And now it's turned into a nightmare. A lot of problems with this house. There'll be a lot of things to fix. Damon, he's not going to like me anymore. I see mold spores across the bottom of the baseboard. Is it enough to create a lot of spore counts in the air? The answer is yes. If I was an inspector, I would have said, you've got a lot of problems with this house. Never mind what I can't see. It's what I can see. Now, when the other home inspector was in here, obviously, this was a completed kitchen. You know, and there's nothing he's going to see inside the walls, which I'm fine with. He's not, uh, <sighs> he doesn't have x-ray vision. He can't see through the walls. He does, we do have tools that he can use, but it's not going to see what we want to see. However, as soon as you look under the sink, what do we see? This is the stuff that's in front of his eyes that is not in the report, OK? We have the drain. No clean out, that's nothing, that's minor, okay? So everything's set up, but where is the drain for the dishwasher? It's past the trap. Vent gases can come back up and escape through openings of the drainage. And code says it must be before the trap. What else is in front of my eyes that's under this sink? Let's see. <laughs> I don't know. Electrical with water? That's a live line. Not in the report. There's an extension cord hanging out of where does that go to? Do you know? Attic. Attic. OK. Let's get house. <laughs> <laughs> We've basically been living down here because the upstairs uh, kitchen was a wreck. There was a whole bunch of issues up there. And we started to notice it smelled like pee. So I started to take down the ceiling. It was all mouse. And lo and behold, more morets, more tape. So we have actually all kinds of electrical junction tie-ins. So we have electrical issues within the home. Look at this. Ooh, that is not the way to do that. Furnace room time. Furnace room. This is the dryer. What? That's the dryer. That's the dryer hose. This is a dryer vent. Yes, yeah. the dryer vent. That's the vent you're seeing outside that it was there's never the, attached. There's the cheek before. Oh. All right. And I guess these are things you're noticing. And this was not in the report. And electrically, right here, we've tied what? OK, look at this. This is, like, really not good. They needed a box here to plug in the extension cord. They cut into the line, ran the line for the plug, and just for the hell of it. It's pretty, because I have a tester. Oh, look, we have no light. That's how the light's working in this room, too. Is it wired right? No! <laughs> and how did you miss everything else? How did you miss the humidifier? How did you miss the electrical, the plumbing, the venting? And did he even check this filter? Look at this filter. That filter has been on the furnace way too long. A lot of problems in this room alone. We're not in a position to, you know, start paying. Now fork for out for repairs. electrical, plumbing, mold. It's 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 too much. It's it's overwhelming. It's utterly overwhelming. And I mean that's the key phrase here. I do see signs of water penetration from the attic right here. There I definitely see mold. I see a lot of mold right here and water signs that it was leaking in this area. With insufficient airflow in the attic and allowing hot air to escape the house into the attic, hot air is meeting cold air, creating condensation on the underside. And that's why we're molding. You know what, I think the homeowners are smart enough to see that once they got the house, one plus one equals two, two plus two equals crap, something's wrong. The doors are sealed up to the attics. If there's electrical issues, there's plumbing issues, something's wrong. Oh my god, look at pull out the carpet. What do you see? I see mold spores across the bottom of the baseboard. We're starting to look at things and things are wrong. Supposedly, the inspector could not go in those areas, but shame on him. There was enough to see. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't I'm, I'm harping on this because there was enough to see. 
We need to educate the homeowners, but we need to give them the truth on what's wrong with the house. And there's a good thing here. Nothing's happened to the kids or the homeowners to date other than the possibility of breathing in the spore count of the mold, which is enough, but nothing else has happened. Right now, with all those electrical junctions and paperback insulation, think about that. It's the old insulation, paperback insulation in that attic, and they've cut the wires and tied in, and these lines heat up because of all the pod lights and everything. They run in conjunction with the electrical lines in there. What does it take to light paper when it comes to electrical? Not much. Electrical outlets must be a certain height off the floor. Now, just imagine the water running across the floor, touching this receptacle, and someone standing there. Not a good scenario. This is not right. And this is the least amount, whether or not he bent down to take a look here. Did he even bend down to take a look in the drain here to see that the pop-up's in the wrong location or that there's no clean out on the trap? Is it in the report? No. I'm wondering, what the hell did you look at? Morons were on a washer and dryer. And the dryer itself is tapped into that plastic pipe that we saw down in the furnace room. And this is just like sloppy crap. This is. You can see the line in the camera that the exhaust line is completely squished and not exhausting out and just allowing more moisture in here. Think of all the moisture just, just from this dryer here. Look at the plumbing coming through the floor. This washer and dryer, the plumbing, the electrical to it, the exhaust of the dryer was not in the report. And by the way, is this a good spot to push the washer and dryer when we have a nice sized basement? Two stoves would be two 40 amp breakers. There's one 40 amp breaker, there's a 30 amp breaker, and no other double 40. So what does that tell you? There's two stoves, there's one double breaker. Did they wire them together? Not allowed. Totally against code. I am seeing so many junction points. Just simply taking an old line to a new Romex line, and it's totally not allowed. It must be accessible. Remember, James pulled this drywall down. And the home inspector's not gonna see this. That's, that's very apparent. So for all the home inspectors to go, Mike, he's not gonna see this, it was drywall. I get that. But what about all the electrical things that were in front of my eyes, like in the furnace room, like under the sink where it shouldn't be, like the receptacle at the base of the cabinet? I see enough electrical issues throughout the house that warrants an issue with electrical. And how far does it spread? I'm just going to take you upstairs, show you a few things, and I'm going to apologize now to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, That's a bad way to start our conversation. Yeah, well, this, this way, it won't feel so bad okay. after I take you through the house and realize what we're going to be it's doing. You're apologizing, okay. This is a side split, right? Yeah. So take this light yeah. and take a look and tell me what you see. Okay, junction boxes, wires hanging, I see a roof leaking, I see improper insulation. We are very, very stale in there, right? Yeah, so there's no ventilation. We have improper ventilation. We actually have vented socks. Do you see some in there? Okay. But I believe they went directly over wood. So the homeowner notices all of a sudden minor surface mold of the baseboard here. He's pulled the carpet back. He's starting to panic now because he has his kids. Yeah. And he, you know, he stops, he doesn't know what to do. Because he's got his kitchen, he's opened up a few things. Yep. Actually, he's opened up more, and I'll show you that. We see the surface mold across the wall. Yeah. We see no signs of leakage coming in whatsoever from the top. Surface mold again. Now, this is a closet that has surface mold, and it continues down, minor as we get lower, but more on the high side. This means there's no air circulation up here. There's Very no air good movement. so far. Very good. So we have the washer and dryer here. We have the plumbing coming through the floor. We have the supply feeds coming through the floor. If this was running full time, if it's not vented properly, you think there's moisture coming off of this? Oh, you're doing good so far. Keep that thought. But James pulled this drywall down. Because he starts wanting to check feeds, right? Because he's starting to think. He's smart enough to put one and one together. Yeah. Two stoves, one dryer, one breaker, double 40, one breaker, double 30. Yeah. So how is it wired? We see a junction yeah. without a box. A junction. Oh, wow. A Not junction. even a junction. They're just and taped together. They're everywhere oh, throughout this house. Now let's just, for the hell of it, step into the furnace room. Look at this. So somebody's put in a receptacle. They tapped into the blue line to power this, to run an extension cord, to tie into the light that sits oh. here, OK? This is the exhaust for the dryer. You got to be joking. No, OK, this oh. is the exhaust. Now let's put, let's put this all together. Okay. It's not exhausting properly outside. It's letting all the moisture 
Very upstairs. good. Upstairs. Very good. So why do you think that we had so much surface mold in the house? Well, first of all, there's no air circulation. It would have been humid in here. The moisture would have built up and started eating at the organic material on the walls. Very good, sir. Let's see if we can bring it back to a comfortable first time home buy and not an absolute nightmare that they are, they are freaking out right now and okay. I can't blame them. This is not a small job. It's a big house. It's a big house and we have a lot of mold. We have kids bathing here, splashing around, Frank. Now, what do you think of that? They missed that on the home inspection? They missed that on the home inspection. Let's make the house safe for them. Okay, can I pick some new colors for this place? Uh, I, I have full faith in you, man. You can do, you can do pretty well what you want. You're, you're, you're in control. Thank God, because the colors in this house is one thing the inspector should have caught. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We have mold. We have water marks everywhere. The children have been coughing. He's been coughing. We've done our best to block off rooms and tape up what we could, but it's not enough. The first thing I want in here is a test for air quality to see if we have an issue to get them the hell out of the house right now. This is a hard one. James and Doreen and their three kids had to move out on a moment's notice. They knew there was mold. They had no idea how bad it was until we called in the company to take the air test and actually tell them how bad it was. We have a level one, we have a level two, and a level three. This is not a small job. It's a big house. It's a big house and we have a lot of mold. We're gonna uh, make the whole house a level three except for the living room dining room. So uh, we've uh, decided to make this the, the negative air chamber in here and put all their personal belongings in right. there and everything else to level three, category right. three. That means we're gonna have respirators in here when we start tearing down. Yeah. We're going to have all the equipment that we need to, to follow the, uh, the rules, regulations for mold. They have to isolate this whole house. They have to work in every room where they had a reading. They have to keep going until they found no mold left in the house. Only then can they do another air test to tell me that it's clean. I'm not bringing anyone in here until the house is clean. Five twenty S was a product that was designed by NASA originally. It's a biological, which is a, a bacterial product that actually consumes the mold. We cold fogged it, and it gets into every crack, every crevice, which you cannot do without removing things, like removing the roof to get at the top parts of the trusses, where a cold fogging will actually work into it and get rid of the, the mold. It's very important to deal with any mold problem you have right now. Number one, what you see is not what there is there. It's, it's the way to explain it is like an iceberg. What you see on top of the water is not all that is there. It's what you don't see which is the problem. When the remediation team was in the attic removing the insulation, they noticed mold on top of the ceiling drywall. That's why it had to be removed. They also removed any drywall in any bedrooms or closets that still had visible mold on them. What we do is oversee the mold abatement projects. We do the inspection work, inspect the level of cleanliness, ensure that all the mold has been removed. Once the mold removal has been completed by the contractor, we come in and uh, take air samples to ensure that all the mold has been remediated. Now that the mold has been removed and the work areas are clean, we're gonna spray a special paint called an encapsulant which is a mold inhibiting paint uh, that will seal the attic and ensure that any mold growth that may be left behind will be sealed uh, and won't affect the air quality uh, from here on. We are back, we have a positive air quality test. I'm allowed to bring the guys back in. It's been a long time coming. I have to get in that house and start working on it. Biggest reason we're here is mold and electrical, okay? The electrical is a mess. Carl, you just pointed out earlier, you saw the electrical in the corner there. It's an extension cord tied into what? We don't even have any clue. There's problems everywhere. They've spliced 220 and into aluminum wiring. aluminum wiring. I mean, the list goes on. This might be a full gut, not saying full gut in all the drywall everywhere, but it's gonna be patches everywhere. So, ready? 
get at it. I guess so. <laughs> okay, let's go. Well, there's already a lot of drywall damage, and I'm only gonna create more. Instead of trying to work around the furniture, I'm just gonna move it into a storage bin. It's just me and you, sweetie. I'm ready to come to my place for a little while, a little vacation. It'll be okay, baby. afraid that it's a full rewire. Um, how about if I, we make a bet right now that yeah. it is. So at a point like this when it's already open, yeah. the idea is rewire it now. Now it makes sense to get it done. Everything I'm finding in this home, especially in the attic, is open air connections. So we got outlets buried under the insulation with extension cords running around going into the kitchen. It's either the guy was stupid, whoever did it. Everything I've been finding in this home, this is now, doesn't surprise me. Oh, look at this. This here is basically called an open air connection. There's no box that's containing the wires. Imagine now you have, um, there's a spark, there's an arc. Well, it's encased in that box. It's got nowhere to go. Well, this is, you got, what? It was like a quarter inch away from the wood. You have some arcing, like if the plug is defective, you have some arcing, some sparking, you're like not even a quarter inch. It, there's a chance there of fire. It's not safe. We're gonna do it right. I took the bulkheads out in the kitchen so I can get my new cabinets up to full height. Since I've done that, I might as well take down the rest of the ceiling instead of trying to patch it. I have no idea about these kind of things, but I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be vented out somewhere. And it's not. We know there's improper ventilation because the attic was filled with mold. Well, let's take a look in there. You want to get in the attic? Is that that, <laughs> that, that hole that big and I'm this big? Um, where's Steve? Steve's bigger than me now. What are you... Is this enough access for you, bud? Holy crap. <laughs> was that bad, eh? Yeah, it was that bad. So we need to get up there and just sort of check the vents, make sure, but yeah. it's guaranteed they're probably not. Like, you look at this, right? These vents are designed for a proper size hole, yeah. right? Well, that one's small. This one here is not even one third of the size. Oh my God. Because they're right. on a beam. That looks like it's been whacked with a hammer. It sends up red flags that you, we want to do a really yeah. thorough roof inspection. Right. Because when you see stuff like that, that's red flags. Mm -hmm. If they're doing stuff like that, what else they do? So the existing issue with the attic on this home was that it wasn't vented properly, both with the roof vents as well as the soffits um, not being open enough with the plywood coverings, uh, as well as the attic insulation, which was blown in, filling most of the openings. So what we're doing here is we're, we're going to cut large openings around the perimeter of the house to allow the cooler fresh air into the attic, correcting the soffits, the roof vents, and the attic insulation with proper uh, baffles is going to really get the airflow going in this attic. That's the hole you went through. Yeah, me and Andrew. I want videotape. I don't believe this. <laughs> like, our hands are tied behind our back because you only make so much and you can only fix so much at a time. The problem is, is that the report itself is worth garbage because it did not tell you what's wrong with this house. Hey, Mike. Mr. Bennett. How's it going? Right Good. Here, right How's it going with list? you? Oh, not too bad. As you can see, we're missing ceilings. Yeah, they're taking them all down, eh? Well, did you see the bin? Yeah. <laughs> the bin's full. OK, so how much mold? Oh, every floor. It was obviously the attic was 
infested with mold. They basically had to gut all the ceilings because of the amount of mold that was in the attic. They pulled all the insulation. They were determining that it was on the, bo uh, the back of the drywall, so they wanted to pull everything just to make sure they got all the mold out. They did a great job. So we're gonna rewire the house, plumbing. <sighs> yeah. We're gonna rough in their kitchen. We've already sort of laid it out and uh, we're gonna have an installer come in and install it for us. You know what, let's not waste time, let's go get them. James, Doreen. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Hi, Doreen, good, good to see you. How are you? Yeah. I'm sorry that uh, you've been in a hotel for, what, a month now? Yeah. yeah. How's that been? Uh, not too great. <laughs> we want to go home. Yeah. Uh, well, I got some bad news about that one. You're not coming home anytime soon, but not too long. We're going to hope for about three weeks here now that we've got to this stage, and I'll show you. Actually, why don't you come in? Okay. Damon's been working rather hard. Alrighty, so Damon went ahead and pulled the ceiling. Was it you or was it? We pulled this ceiling, yeah, but there was parts of it that were already pulled. You're gonna notice that their ceiling's pulled all over this house. Now, you know we did an air test. We had to get you out of the house. So we brought in the mold guys, and holy crap and a half. You can see that all of the sheet in your attic space was completely molded, right? So they've gotta go in and they gotta strip it, they're gonna seal it, that's why it looks white, because now it's sealed. I would never in my wildest dreams realize it could be this bad. Let me explain why. We have an exhaust fan in the kitchen that exhausts into the attic only, does not exhaust outside. That's one. Two, all your soffit all the way around the house is a vented soffit, but there's plywood under it with no holes. So air is not moving from outside up through the soffit into the attic space and out through the vents, which even the vents are very poor. And if he was on the roof, I'm sure he could have noticed. Let's talk about the electrical for a sec. The electrical, all the pot lights in the house are wrong. They're all wrong. They don't go into the attic space in that style of pot light. It's a retrofitted, it's not a canister that is proper for an attic space that is an air sealed box, a fire rated box because of insulation and other things that are in the attic that can cause a fire. So you could have had a fire from the pot lights. You could have had a fire from all the electrical tie-ins throughout the whole house. So we are going to rewire the whole house. For me, I thought the electrical was the most extreme and it turns out it's the mold that was worse than anything else. Like, Well, they're very comparable. <laughs> <laughs> one makes you sick and one can kill you. So, so you're getting sick while you're here and you have the potential for death all along the time. Let's go upstairs right now, explain a little more, okay? So we have cut out everything that's to do with mold. You can see that the electrical is being started, and wow, does your sheathing look good in your attic, eh? <laughs> <laughs> this gives you an idea, because all the, all the ceilings are like this everywhere except the living room, and we can work over top of that. We're trying to save that ceiling and all that cold molding. Home inspectors should be equipped fully, absolutely fully, to inspect a house. I mean, tools galore. Attic, 100% access, otherwise the home inspection doesn't happen. It should be it's really that simple. <laughs> Let's go downstairs and I'll explain a couple more things. If he does not have access, he walks away. How hard is that to implement into a policy or a law? All the plumbing here was wrong, we know that. All the electrical here was wrong. We're gonna pull this floor. We're going to give you new carpet. We're gonna give you allergenic carpet. So we're gonna really think about cleaning the air in the house. So it's a lot of work to do this, but we're gonna do this. This is, this is what this is all about, is helping you, okay? Yeah. Keep smiling. So much. You're welcome. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Yeah. We weren't present during the home inspection, so we, you know, we couldn't add anything to, you know, what can you do? Like, the guy's gonna say what he's gonna say and write it up and that's it, so. He wrote a beautiful 20-page report, but um, there's no substance to it. What's the easiest thing in the world to do right now? Come in here, I could have laid another floor right over top of this. We're not gonna do that. What's gonna happen is it's gonna crack on me. We're actually gonna prep this floor properly by taking it back down to the original subfloor and not just go over crap. This line here is the line that's going up to the dryer. This other line is the stove line. So, <laughs> again, speechless, idiots, stupid. Here's another thing. No box, couple of screws, extension cord wire. That's not safe at all. Things like this, these are these are fire hazards. These are big risks. It's it's danger it's danger to life. 
pieces of wire here, pieces of wire there, open air connections. We got more open air connections that are up in this corner. Clear as day, clear as day. There's a lot of things here that are right in the open that should have been caught. If you ask me, he walked around with his eyes closed. He does have a kitchen in the garage that we need to take out today and sort of do a layout because I have no idea what his layout is yet. What is evidence in front of my eyes is enough to speak loudly. Something's wrong. It's an eye opener, that's for sure. It's, but this is the education that we needed to have to understand what's happening and where do we go from here. Let's get this down before Carl comes this way. He's going on pretty fast on those tiles for a change. So I want to open this straight up so that there's no debris getting in his tiles, OK? they bought were a display model. Yeah. So it really couldn't work properly in the space. So we had to add some cabinets to make right. it work. So things were done a little bit backwards. They, exactly. they bought the kitchen by looking at it. They yeah. bought it and then tried to make it work. And right. it was never going to happen. No, it was never going to work. They're getting a, a brand new fridge. They're getting a new dishwasher. Oh. Right. And they're getting a, a stainless steel telescopic exhaust fan. Last but not least, countertops. Countertop, the exactly. countertops are coming in. We had them measured today, right? Um, and they should be installed by probably Monday at this point. We have Thursday today. You're going to be done tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Yes, we will. I'm a happy man. It's been a crazy few days. We still have a lot of work to do. We're still patching holes. I mean, the electricians have knocked holes in every single room, as they do in a rewire, of course. But, you know, we're chasing them down, and we're patching behind them. The tankless system gets hooked up today, meaning the gas hook up to the tankless. It's the last stage. I still have to do spray foam and blown in insulation in the attic. But before I do that, I have to run all my new vents through the roof. So I need Steve Graves from Better Contracting back. Well, this is one of the vents we saw from the attic that uh, they cut about a one inch hole. The basic size of the hole should follow sort of this dimension of the vent. What we have here is not a very big hole. Now, there is a rafter here, but uh, that doesn't really come into play when you cut the vent a proper size, so it's just sort of ridiculous. So we'll be putting in a quartz countertop. Uh, Mike really likes quartz, uh, so do you. And yeah, I like them, I have them at home. So they're it's, beautiful. It's great. Yeah. Well, and this is what they wanted. This is not the original countertop we have for them, but I think they're gonna like this one even better. Yeah. We always wanna go bottom out when we do quartz. Oh, 95%. There's no other option. 95% of solid surface tops are undermount. And right. that's what people want if they really understand what it's all about. Right. Once they use it, they love it. Yeah. Because everything just wipes into the sink. You don't have the ridge, you don't have the gump, you don't that's have right. any of that stuff. The best way to go. in today, which is fantastic. It allows me to actually get my backsplash on. Now, I've probably picked the hardest backsplash you'll ever want to do in your life. Instead of having a 12 by 12 square tile that you can just put up, or let's say a 6 by 6, a 4 by 4 tile to put up, I actually went with, what, one inch tiles, I have half inch tiles, and it's all on one mesh pad. Now, when I go to put this on the wall, what's it going to want to do? It's going to want to squish together like this. All the pieces end up falling together, your joints all get tight. You can actually see here that we have tight joints, tight joints, tight joints. So really what I have to do is I'm laying it 
we have to put spacers in every single joint. Everything wants to sag on me. So by putting spacers, it keeps all your joints even and true. It's a pain in the butt, but it's gonna look fantastic when we're done. Considering it is a Holmes job and there's still 20 other trades we're working around, we're trying to get everybody in today, get it all done, tomorrow we'll be left with touch-ups. job we stayed here till about nine o'clock last night just finishing things off you know but we always do it we always finish it off in time whether it takes a few late nights or not we always get it done it's a little bit of everything you know get things going walk away finish things come back you know that's what we do kind of help each other out depending on the tasks and uh, what has to be done. So we're just kind of bouncing back and forth. And that's what's uh, fun about this job is that you don't get stuck doing the same thing all the time. You can move around and do different things all the time, right? We've been here for a freaking long time. It feels like I've actually moved into this house. Everyone's exhausted. Everyone's been working really late. These guys, like I've been bouncing around from job to job. This crew has stayed here the whole time and actually accomplished this job. It's great. How you doing, man? Mike, how you doing? Wow. You like? That's a whole new freaking uh, kitchen. Yeah. I'm really impressed. I'm telling you, you, you've got it down. Thank you, man. Well, it's the people around me, that's, right? That's better than I expected. I appreciate that. So this is the other tile pad Sherry laid. Gives the kids something to walk in from, being muddy or wet. Well, that's a smart idea if you think yeah. that it's winter outside and you're coming in the back door. Yeah. Let's not ruin this beautiful new carpet. There's Shelly. Oh, there's the turtle. Isn't she cute? Yes. <laughs> Are you going to miss her? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've had she'd, I'd get home, her. Mike, and she'd come up to the top of the water and splash. She's probably starving, but, uh, you know, I took it as affection. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. This is great. I didn't expect to go this far in the basement, but uh, this is great. Not only does he not have to come home and finish the kitchen, he actually has a laundry room he can use. Yeah. Not in the wrong spot, that's just totally not working right, not vented, not anything, and creating mold. He doesn't have to come and finish the basement. He doesn't have to fix the electrical. He doesn't have to fix the plumbing. He doesn't have to fix the furnace. He doesn't need a new carpet. He doesn't need to paint. Man, you more than made it right. Thank you. Hey, folks. Long time no Hi. see. Hi, Doreen. Hi, Good to you? see you. James. James. How are you? How are you? We're doing the crisscross here. Yeah. So you happy we're about to bring you home? Yes, wow. absolutely. It's about time. Well, let's start by walking around the back. So we brought your turtle back home. So you no longer have a laundry room in an area where it's not supposed to be. You do have all new carpet, and this is a hyperallergenic. It's uh, good for the kids, good for you. Everything that we try and do is all the drywall in the house is mold resistant. Everything we use is environmentally friendly. Let's take a look at the basement. Damon did something I really like, and he actually got into your kitchen. Put in a proper laundry room. Put in an HRV system, heat recovery ventilation, that will allow to pull in fresh air, constantly move through the air through the house, because this house was a major breathing problem. Yeah. It had a breathing problem. All the lines run throughout the conduit, and I love this system, I really do. So this has all been fixed, all your electrical's been fixed, you have a tankless hot water system. This fires when you open the tap, right? Yeah. So it never keeps heating the tank again, so I'm hoping you wanted to put one of these in. Oh, but definitely. <laughs> but you got one. Big plus. All right, let's go upstairs. Now this bedroom obviously was another big sign that you found the mold, right? Yeah. On this wall here. Yeah. In the closet. Right. You remember seeing all the openings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damon did something really extra that I liked. So all vertical walls that are inside the attic, he brought in Alex, our spray foam specialist, 
and spray foam that wall. That stops the, the cool in the summer losing into the attic and vice versa in the winter, the cool coming back into the house. Not to mention running in all brand new uh, cellulose. Rob's guys came in and put in new downspouts, east troughs, the smart screen, and Steve put in new roof vents with the proper size openings. Then they cut holes in the soffits so that we had the proper amount of ventilation in the attic. Now we know the house breeze. Now we know the attic breeze bringing in soffit venting, everything that was necessary that this house did not have, and it should have been in the report as far as I'm concerned, the breathability. Just, it, it, it feels livable. I mean, you could feel it. And standing here, it, it, I'm in a different house right now. It's literally a different house. <laughs> Take a look, because I had the wow factor. Damon pulled out the wall, gave me an open concept. Now come into your kitchen. Is this nice or what? Oh, wow. <laughs> and to think we weren't going to give you a kitchen. I know. Look at, oh, you got a new fridge. Yeah. I know. I, that's what I said. I said, look at the fridge. I don't have a fridge like that. Step in that thing. <laughs> and you look at Look inside. Oh Open God. up the fridge. Come on. <laughs> Somebody got you a fruit platter. A fruit platter. The electrical's right. The plumbing is right. <laughs> I can cook again. <laughs> it's fantastic. All I can say is wow. <laughs> Edwin came yep. in and worked with Damon on the design of the mm -hmm. kitchen, and I hope you really like it. It's very functional. I love your double wall oven. Love it. I love the countertop. You know what type of countertop this is? Quartz. Yes. 100% <laughs> non-porous. Mm -hmm. I love this tile. I walked in and went, oh my god, who picked the tile? Damon picked the tile. Yes. There's Mr. Designer. Mr. Designer. Mr. Designer. Try and match that with this floor. It was pretty hard. I could have watched it. <laughs> New hood. Yeah. I, I mean, oh, I just my think my this God. is stunning. I don't see all the trades here, but honestly, I'd like to thank them from the bottom of my heart. It is Definitely. the amount of work they put into this. Uh, I'd like to thank them so sincerely for what they've done. It is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, Please tell me if you're happy. Do I got to take something down and fix it? <laughs> you're happy? <laughs> Thank you. Because you haven't been saying much. And I, can only, I can only think that you're in shock. I'm still taking right. it in. Awesome, awesome. That's Absolutely cute. awesome. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful. Holy smokes. <laughs>the opportunity to meet a lot of good people. Rob Graves, he's done well over 50 shows with me. Never ever asked for anything. He just, just got in there, jumped in there, helped the people that were in trouble. Make this roof right, he's gotta go. But this guy never asked for anything. All he did was just get up and do it. Bring his sons in, Steve and Mike and his whole crew and just make things right. What'd you find down there, Steve? It's such a low slope, it's flat in a couple of areas. After filming so many shows with Rob, he actually became a close personal friend of mine, fishing, having fun together. The man played hard, he worked hard, that's for sure. We're gonna miss him.